Hey guys, it's Lisa and welcome to my channel. Uh, today we're going to make over some tin cans. Now I have two small ones like this and then I have two larger older ones uh, that are rusty. So I'm going to do four containers out of these. So this one here is a little sharp on the inside, but it's okay. I have a way of uh, covering that. Uh, I don't think anybody's going to get their hands against it anyway because I'm going to uh, put uh, something in these, uh, but I am going to cover that just in case. Now, this is my inspiration piece for my first one. I found this on Pinterest, and I just love the look of it, uh, so I'm going to make something similar to that. And obviously, I'm going to work on the underneath layer first, and uh, the only part of it that's going to show is just right around the neck in the front there. So, um, I'm going to... Um, what I'm doing, because what I'm going to put on this is some script on a napkin. And I don't want any of this silver to show through. And I could have painted this, but I didn't really want to wait on it to finish drying. So what I decided here is to take this one layer of a napkin that I'm going to be adding the script to and doing a couple of layers, at a, one layer at a time underneath it so that I'll make sure that that doesn't show through. Now, I can't do them all at the same time, obviously, because they wouldn't stick well. But uh, I'm just going to do one, one layer at a time and glue that on and then add the next one and glue that on and then add my top layer that's going to have the stamping done on it, if that makes sense. So I'm just using reg regular Elmer's glue here. You can use Mod Podge, uh, and many times I use Elmer's glue as Mod Podge, or you can water Elmer's glue down a little bit. But I'm just using straight glue here and just putting on one layer at a time. Now I'm not going to be able to see this th through my top layer because my top layer, although on the inspiration piece the top layer was made from from paper. Mine on this one is going to be just uh, made from cloth. So um, because of that you won't be able to see any of this through. So now that I've gl glued two layers on then I can take my third layer and go ahead and stamp on it. And I'm just using a script stamp that I've had for several years. Uh, you can use um, just any script stamp that you want. They're very uh, very affordable and easy to find on Amazon. So I don't know the name of this one, um, but I think it came in a set of maybe three or four um, at a very good price, I'm sure. Now I didn't want to use my kindest regard stamp on this one because it's a larger lettering and because I have such a small area, I want to have more of the script, so that's why I decided to use this one. So now that I have that glued on, uh, then I can start to add my cloth layer. And I just have a piece of vintage cloth that, um, that I'm just going to cut to fit this. And um, you can use any cloth you want at this point. Uh, this is just what I felt like would look good from what I had. And I thrifted this a while back and I, I wasn't sure what I was going to use it for, but I think this is perfect for it. Now, I'm sorry about the echo, but I'm back in my studio again and I'm trying to add enough in here that I don't have as much of an echo, uh, but I don't want to take up my space. So, um, so that's kind of a, kind of a dilemma that I have. I'm sure as I start to fill up my little storage areas that that, that will help. So I'll cut this just a little bit wider than I need because I feel like I can just uh, cut it after I have it on here, the size that I need it. I want the opening to be in the front, obviously. So I'm gonna let that bottom be glued together in the front. Normally, I would put that in a less conspicuous area, uh, but it has to go in the front. Uh, but again, I'm not really worried because I'm going to be adding some embellishments to the front anyway. So now, what I'm going to do is uh, just uh, cut off the top the length that I need it and kind of glue around that top. 
And when you're using paper, you can, uh, you can kind of roll that down and it gives it a very good look. Uh, but because it's cloth, I'm gonna have to maneuver that and manipulate it. And I don't want any precise edges here, so I'm, I'm just kind of having to rough that up a little as I go. Some of you may be wondering why I'm putting out so many videos lately again, uh, but just like when I was doing the videos for Christmas, um, I needed to get a lot of those done, and so it's the same thing with spring. There's so many spring ideas that I need to get on here. So I apologize when I make mistakes because of having to go so fast with these. Um, I know that in a previous video, not that long ago, I double voiced a few times, so I'm sorry about that. I would have taken it off, but then I've lost the video. So um, I just hope that it wasn't too aggravating to listen to. So I took my antiquing ink and I'm just kind of where I've roughed up that edge. I added some of that to uh, give it more of an aged look. And then, like I said, I'm just going to use my glue and just kind of maneuver that and let it uh, open as organically as possible. This is actually my first time doing one of these. I've seen them before. Uh, I've seen actually several different ones uh, and have always wanted to do one, but just never, never tried. Now, you're probably going to see several tin can crafts uh, throughout this season because spring is the perfect time for these and I promise uh, to give it um, a lot of different looks. I won't do the same thing over and over. And I think the great thing about spring crafts is uh, they work on into uh, summer. So now I'm just adding some vintage trim here and I like this soft kind of bluish green and uh, so I'm adding some of that to this and that will be the color scheme for this one. And this is a perfect, uh, this is a perfect project to use a lot of your scraps on. And also a perfect project to uh, experiment with uh, because you can just kind of keep adding and getting new ideas as you go and I feel like these uh, layered would be really pretty so um, just keep adding until you like the look that you get. I think that finished uh, this type of uh, can looks a lot harder than it actually is because as you can see everything that we've done is very simple. And I'm going to add another layer to this one and I have to say that this lace uh, that I got from a viewer is absolutely beautiful. I'm in love with it and um, I think it'll be the perfect addition to this little can. I just love vintage lace. It's probably one of my favorite uh, craft supplies. So again, I'm just going to cut this to fit and glue it in place. And I'm going to be careful how I add my glue because I don't want it showing through. So the places that I glue it will be where it, ne where it really needs to be glued and I can hide it. But I just love this soft, uh, shabby chic look that this one is starting to take on. Now I know that the, the last one, uh, or the inspiration one that I showed you, uh, is a um, pencil holder. This one is not going to be. Uh, I'm going to add a, um, a strap on, or a hanger on this one rather. And uh, this one will be kind of like a wall pocket, I guess, whatever you wanted to use it for. But I, I like the look of uh, the hanger on it. So this one's not going to be a pencil holder. And now to finish uh, the top of this off, uh, I'm using this lace that you can still see through because I don't want any kind of harsh look at the top. I like that the softness. So I just thought this would be a good see-through lace that would work well with this. 
and obviously it needed to be a little bit wider because I cut this uh, more narrow than I probably should have. And here I am just kind of roughing up those edges some more. I feel like the rougher the better. I didn't paint the inside of this because I am going to be filling it. But I didn't want any of that shininess to show through at the top. So um, I just decided to put some lace around the top of the inside also. And again, that just adds more layering. So the more layers, the better. And if you're not saving your tin cans, you really should be because uh, as you can see, these can be completely transformed and this is so perfect for spring decor. And to hide this little bit in the front, we're gonna just add some shabby roses. And I'm just gonna build those right on the can as I go. And if you've not seen me make these, I have um, a few videos where I do them a lot slower than I am and a lot more close up. Um, but as you can see, I'm just twisting and gluing and occasionally you'll change directions that you twist and just keep gluing and that will add more dimension to your rows. So I could stop with this one because at this point I've hidden what I need to hide. Uh, but I wanted to kind of a little cluster of roses here. So I'm going to build a, a few more or a couple more anyway. So when I'm doing a little cluster of roses, I like to kind of change up the, um, the fabric that I'm using. So this one, I'm just using a strip of cotton that I've torn. And I think the first one I did with lace. And I want to add just a little bit of that, um, of that light turquoise. And, um, and so I'll add that in the next flower just by putting a little piece of torn lace underneath it and just kind of scrunching that up. So I want some dimension here. So don't lay it flat, just kind of scrunch it up and that'll give you that color in the background uh, without having to do that color of flower. And that also is good for just adding some extra texture. If you don't want another color behind it, then you can still do that with just to add some texture. And then again, I'm just gonna build that rosette right on top of that. I think that's enough flowers, but I want some different texture here. And so I'm just gonna take some little pearl beads, different sizes of pearl beads and glue them kind of randomly between those flowers. And that'll just kind of dress it up a little bit more and um, add just a little bit more interest to it. So again, I'm just adding these kind of randomly uh, where I feel like there's a little space that needs something. And I'm not using the same size beads because I feel like it, uh, it looks better if I use some smaller ones also. And now I think that's just about finished, uh, except that it does need a hanger. So um, for my hanger, I'm just taking a piece of lace that matches the, the uh, blue on here. And I'm, I've tied a knot in the end and I like to have a little bit underneath that knot to just kind of hang. Um, and I'm just doing that on both sides. I want this one kind of longer. Uh, that way, whatever you put in it, um, will um, have room below the the uh, ribbon. And I could have painted the inside, like I said, and, and put uh, left it for uh, whoever bought it to put something in, but I'm just gonna put some soft flowers in here. So instead of trying to glue some uh, floral foam in here, I'm just gonna cut it to where it'll be tight and just kind of stick it in there and it'll stay well as long as it's good and snug. And that's very easy to do with this floral foam. And now I'm just taking some pieces uh, from different picks and uh, putting little sprigs in there. This won't take very much at all. But I wanna make certain I keep my color soft and I felt like this blue, it being a cheaper flower that I got at the Dollar Tree uh, was a little bit too sharp so I'm using my antiquing wax and, um, and 
muting that down some. And then I'm just gonna stick some little sprigs in there. And like I said, not very many at all. And to cover any of the floral foam that is left over that you can see, there wasn't much, uh, but I'm just gonna stick some Spanish moss down in there and it didn't take very much to, um, to fill that space in. And then that will be, that will complete this one. And I just love how that turned out and I was very surprised at how simple that, that look was to attain. And now I'm gonna do the next small can. And this one I did decide to paint. So um, I just did one coat on this because I'm gonna be adding some other things to it. Uh, and one coat was enough to cover it. So once I got this covered um, on the outside and the bottom, again, this one is gonna have uh, some things inside it so I don't need to paint the inside. Uh, but once this dries, uh, then I'm going to add some decoupage. And I thought this one would be a good one to add these little bunnies to. So, um, I know that not much of this is going to be able to fit. And uh, I want an organic edge on this. So once I separate my one ply from my napkin, uh, then I'm just going to wet uh, take a paintbrush and um, put some water on it and outline where I want this to tear and then uh, and then it will tear much easier. So once I get this torn out where I want it then I'm just going to take some regular Elmer school glue and just glue that right on the front. Now you could use decoupage uh, medium, you could use Mod Podge here but uh, oftentimes I just use uh, regular Elmer's glue as my Mod Podge medi medium or as my decoupage medium. And I think napkins are one of my favorite items to, um, to decoupage with. Now here I'm just kind of tearing out. I won't use this on this can, uh, but I'm just kind of tearing an organic edge around the remaining flowers on this napkin to use in another project. I wanted to add some layering behind this, so I'm just taking one of my script stamps and just very randomly and lightly stamping on uh, just the um, one layer of a napkin and uh, just kind of randomly placing that on the can. That way, uh, when I decoupage those bunnies on there, it'll have just some of this behind it. And I just feel like that just gives it a better look. Now, I guess you could stamp directly on the can, uh, but with these ridges, I just wasn't sure what I was gonna get. So um, I like that added texture to it anyway. So putting it on a napkin worked fine. So now I'm just gonna glue that little image on the front. And like I said, that will be the front of my little can. And this will be a really cute little spring item. I think this one would be a really sweet little spring decor piece to put in a little girl's room. So now after that dries, then I can start adding my trim. And I'm going to start out by putting uh, this lace on the inside rim because this was the can that kind of had a sharp uh, inside to it. It opened a little differently than the other one, and I felt like that just kind of made it a little bit sharp. So I'm just gluing this on the inside. That way I'll have that finished, and then I can start adding my trim to the outside. And not only does this um, make this safer and uh, not um, as likely to cut you, but it also softens the look of the top a lot. Now I wanted to bring out some of that soft pink in the ears. So I'm using some of my vintage uh, lace here in, in this soft pink, and I'm gonna trim out around the top and the bottom. Again, just do what you think looks good. You could bring out some of the blue in the flowers instead, or you could just kind of keep it more neutral. I think these little cans are so fun to do, and I think I could just 
uh, spend an entire day making these and I wouldn't get bored with it. And as much as I love creating, uh, there's a, there are a lot of um, there are a lot of crafts that I do get tired of the same monotonous steps. But this is one that uh, because you can kind of create as you go. This is definitely what I love to do. As you can tell, this little piece of vintage lace that my friend sent me. Um, I'm about to use it up. It is just beautiful, and I know that it has been um, recycled from something, but it's just worked perfect. Uh, so I thought instead of keeping that all pink, I would just kind of break it up a little bit and soften that a little bit more. I know I said how blessed I feel to have a couple of my viewers send me so much beautiful lace. Uh, I, I don't know if I'll ever run out, but um, I'm just so grateful to them. And as you've noticed lately, I am making lots more lacy projects. Now, I think that's all the trim that this one needs, but it does need a handle. And I was trying to decide what to use because I didn't pre-drill the, the can, and now I've got my trim on there. So what I decided to do was to uh, just glue it to the trim on the outside. Uh, but I thought about what to use and then I decided to use a hanger from a paper bag. So these craft bags, I have some large ones that I ordered uh, for my store, but they're just not real sturdy. But that handle is perfect for this. So I'm just gonna take that handle and wrap it with some vintage lace and you could just use regular fabric now i wouldn't recommend using actual ribbon lace ribbon because you don't want to waste it but this is just kind of scraps that have been cut off something and so it's going to give this the texture that it needs and i'm just going to glue it on and um, just cover the whole thing uh, just by hot gluing this around it and then I can just glue that to both sides of the top on top of that ribbon and it will hold just fine. You can even cover this with just regular cloth. You don't even have to use lace at all. It just adds a little bit of extra texture, but I don't even know that that's necessary. I think it might have looked uh, just as good with just regular cloth. So now after I glue this handle on, then it's ready to feel. And all I'm going to do is just put some flowers and, uh, and some eggs in the top and just kind of keep this one very springy. And I'm also going to add uh, just a regular little lace bow. I just tied a bow in it and, uh, and put that right on the side and kept that one very simple. And again, this one just got some spring flowers and some eggs and a little bit of Spanish moss. And I just glued those eggs in. And then for the next one, uh, I'm going to do one of my larger old cans. And, um, and I'm going to start with a seed packet. And because I want to put lavender in this one, then I'm just using a lavender seed packet and obviously this looks new i don't want it to look new so i'm taking my sanding block and just scuffing it up as you can see a lot of that comes off you have to not use a lot of pressure i wanted a lot of it worn but i don't like the white underneath it so i'm going to take my antiquing ink and uh, just antique a lot around the edges and even kind of into the center some and then i'll just tear that off the front and um, and save my seeds, obviously, but just tear that front off and use that. And even after I tear around the edges, I'm gonna antique them some more. Uh, here, I'm just kind of adding the antiquing ink over that white and, and concentrating it around the edges a lot. And then even after I've torn this um, apart, uh, I'm taking my scissors and scuffing up those edges even more before I add my antiquing ink just around the edges. So I'm gonna paint this can uh, in the color drop cloth. 
But before I do that, and that's a Dixie Belle color, before I do that, I'm gonna put some Elmer's glue on this. Now you could use a regular, uh, regular crackle medium. Dixie Belle has a really good one. Uh, but I'm just using regular Elmer school glue here, and I'm going to put a good generous coat uh, on this entire um, can uh, so that my paint will crack. And I don't even let this dry really well. Uh, I let it dry mostly, but not even completely, and I just put my paint in another little container so that I don't mess up the rest of my paint, but I wanted this to really, really crackle. So um, I got plenty of crackle out of this. And for most projects, it would be too much, but not for this one. This is gonna work out perfectly. I did decide though here to tear some of the top of that off because uh, I didn't want the, the seed packet to be as tall as the can and I just left what was necessary on it. But I, now I'm antiquing that edge that I tore off. But then I'm just going to Mod Podge that right over the top of this crackled paint. And I'm also using my antiquing ink and just kind of antiquing this up a little bit more because uh, I didn't want to take away from that rusty can look. And then, like I said, I'm just going to glue that right to the front uh, of this can. And this is one that I'll keep very simple because I don't want to take away from this vintage look. So I just decoupage that to the front and then I'm going to tie some rustic fabric around it. I think I use um, stained coffee stained um, cheesecloth and just tie that around the top and then I'll just take some of my lavender lavender picks from Walmart and cut those apart and just put those sprigs down inside that floral foam and just keep that very simple just like this is just a can of uh, lavender flowers and then I'll fill in um, with the uh, Spanish moss where you can see that foam. But for this one, I wanted a rusty wire hanger. So I'm just drilling um, holes in both sides and then I'll just put a rusty wire hanger on it and then fill this with the lavender and this one will be finished. And I just love the simple primitive uh, look of this one and who doesn't love lavender now for the next uh, large old can that I'm going to be doing I'm going to do it the same uh, in the same style that I did the first one but I'm going to start with this uh, craft paper that I, that I had on left over from the bag that I cut the handle off this is part of that and this is going to be the outer layer of this one. And I'm starting with the outer layer just so that this has time to dry. Because what I'm going to do is I'm going to cover one side of this uh, with a tissue wrap that I got from Hobby Lobby. And then on the other side, just the corners that are going to turn down will need something on the inside of them. So I'm going to... Um, I'm going to cover the inside of it with a different paper and you'll see us what I'm talking about when I do it uh, but like I said I'm decoupaging this uh, this um, tissue wrap from uh, Hobby Lobby on the one side and I want this to kind of have a little bit stiffer feel to it and that's why I decided to start with the craft paper and then just do this on the on the um, outside of it and that'll just kind of add some a little bit more stiffer look to it and then like I said I'll do just those top corners on the other side with the fabric that or with the paper that I want to show when that's turned down and when I um, make this to fit I want to tear these edges I don't want cut edges because I want it to have uh, just more of a rustic look to it. This is going to be kind of a French country look, but it's going to be rustic also. And once I get this uh, this torn to fit, 
then uh, I'll know what area I need to decoupage on the back side. As you can see, this is uh, a little too long, uh, but it's it's very easy to uh, tear that off the top once it's against that can. So, like I said, I'm decoupaging some um, some coordinating um, paper on the t corners of the um, back side, and then uh, and then I can tear this to fit the length that I want it because I don't want these edges to be sharp either. So I'll just tear them both at the same time. But first, I'm going to need a finish uh, underneath that that will coordinate. And so I'm just using an old book page here. And I use my script stamp on it and just stamp that ahead of time. And now I'm going to decoupage that right to the top of the front. So like I said, that'll give something to show underneath that uh, when, when I pull that apart at the top. And at this point, I've already torn that top edge to fit. And now I'm just kind of gluing everything in place except uh, there around the front top. And I'll leave enough room there to be able to open that up. But I'm just hot gluing all this in place. And once I get all that hot glued in place, then I'm just kind of ripping that bottom up to, to fit neatly. I left that a little longer also so that I would not I would make sure to be able to cover this well. And now that everything is torn to fit, then I'm going to take my antiquing ink and just really, really antique around all the edges because I want them to go with this rusty can. So, um, all around the bottom and all around the top gets that. And now, unlike the can with the fabric, I can just kind of roll this and manipulate it just the way I want it and it'll stay well. So, the paper definitely is much easier than the fabric. I, I still like that I did the fabric, but uh, I just really like the way the paper does here. And again, I still want to rough up those edges good. I don't want anything to be straight. And then once I do that, I add a little bit more of that antiquing ink around that. And now it's ready to start embellishing with trim. So um, I found a color that I wanted here, but I didn't want this wide here. So I decided to cut part of this off and glue it to the bottom. So again, I'm just pulling that pink out um, that is on the underneath so that this all br it brings this all together. And I think that this one is my personal favorite. Um, I just love these colors together and I love this French country look. And then here I am adding that narrow vintage lace over the top of this one. Uh, again, it's just kind of bringing all those colors together and also adding lots of texture. Uh, now, I decided here to add some lace around the top of this one. So again, I just glued that on the inside. I really, really like the combination of the soft lace with the very rustic metal. And with this one, obviously, there's no need uh, to put any kind of finish on the inside because I just love that rusty finish that's already there. And because of that, I won't be filling this one with anything. And with this one, I had a flower that I already had made up that would go perfectly with this one. So I'm just going to glue that to, to the front there and then add a couple of small ones with it. And I added just a little bit of lace behind that just to add some more dimension to it. And then, like I said, I'll build those other little roses on, on the side. Again, if you're not familiar with how to build these flowers, I'll attach another uh, couple of videos to this uh, in the description so that um, you'll be able to figure out how to make them easier. In this one, I'm just taking a little scalloped edge from a part of a doily and just starting with the outside making the size that I want it and then just kind of gluing it 
on the inside just working my way in until I get it filled up and then I'm just going to add some little pearl beads to this one and it will be finished and I just love how all of these turned out and again they were very fun to make and what I like even more about these is I have almost no money in them I wanted to take the time again to thank you guys for all your support, all your sweet comments. Um, you just don't know uh, what a blessing that all of you are to me. I don't feel like I say that enough. I hope you guys enjoyed this video, and I hope to see you in the next. Thank you so much for watching. Have a great evening, and God bless you and your family.